This is the Anarchist War Journal entry number 18, and I'm happy to introduce to you once more Professor Bob Murphy. I first saw him in a debate with David Friedman in attendance. I was there at a festival in New Hampshire in 2013. And of course, I had uh, my first interview with him earlier this year in February at the Students for Liberty Conference in Washington, D.C. And he's a really funny guy. Uh, it's, it's great to see him talk up going up there and bring a lot of good brevity to the discussion of economics. And I'm going to be starting a reading club, as it were, for human action here very soon, using also the study guide that he created and accompanying the tome of Ludwig von Mises' work. And so I'm excited for that. I'm excited to read his book and um, put all the pieces together for myself and kind of help bring this information and knowledge here in my community of Richmond as well. So with that aside, uh, Here's Bob Murphy. Thank you so much for watching and stay liberated. Why, why is uh, Austrian economics important to you? Do I hold this? Oh, no, I'll hold it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Austrian economics is important. Um, I, you know, I decided to devote my career to promoting it because it. I think the Austrians in this day and age especially, they have a capital theory that's superior to the mainstream approach. And there's a lot of things, especially when it comes to the business cycle, where you need to really have that idea of a structure of production. And so these other approaches will have like a capital stock K or something, and they're going to capture all the subtleties of the world with that single number. And I just think you're going to miss out a lot if that's your approach. Right, right. And then um, what do you think of government and should it be abolished? Well, I actually, somebody, um, I used to use the terms government and state interchangeably. And then somebody sent me, um, I think it was an Albert J. Nock discussion of why he, he thought that was not helpful. So I, so to, if I literally answer your question, no, I don't want to get rid of government per se, if that just means, you know, the, that affairs are governed by rules of law or something. Right. But as far as the state, yes, I think the things that we traditionally associate with uh, the state apparatus, that those, they're either legitimate things can be returned to the private sector, but a lot of what it does is not something that should be done at all. So, yeah, we should stop those. Things. So it's not that we have to worry about the state refraining from doing all the great stuff it's doing. It's the reason to get rid of the existing states is that they're the active cause of so much horror in the world right now. Right, and you produced uh, a great work in terms of like production and security, uh, how the market would provide uh, security, I guess, in terms of um, armies or and whatnot. Um, so I guess, how would you respond to that kind of argument and that uh, you can't, uh, warlords will take over otherwise? Oh, sure. Uh, so admittedly, that this is a really tricky question and if somebody who hasn't, you, I think people would have to come around to laissez-faire in the production of roads and the post office and schools and, da, da, da. and the, the last thing they're going to give up is the military defense and judicial rulings and law enforcement. Um, so having said all that, yeah, I mean, just the same principles that apply in those other areas, they apply also here. And so, you know, there's a huge presumption of in favor of liberty and something like this. And so the burden of proof is on the other side, the statist, if you will, to just say, no, the, the the problem of competition here is so bad that we can not worry about giving all the guns to one central group. Because, you know, in other contexts, you know how that's a bad idea. Right, right. And you're a big comic book fan, right? I surmise, eh, a little no, uh, in terms of Captain America. Oh, well, the, the short answer is I'm not a comic book fan, okay, okay. but with Captain America, yeah. <laughs> I think it was, the, I know this artist, and, and so she made a caricature of me like that, and everybody just went nuts. And I don't even remember what sparked that, but then that's, I think it's because, you know, the persona, like I pre portray myself as this real goody two shoes or right. something like, you know, I don't know. But I saw like a, the Civil War picture of you and I guess Tom Woods or something like that with the Captain America and Iron Man, or I don't know, maybe it was another image on a meme a while ago. Um, but in terms of comic books, then. Uh -huh. um, I thought maybe you could uh, tell us a story of, I guess, the Ludwig von Mises uh, Batman comic uh, that's kind of have like a little frame there on the bookstore. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you know? I mean, I've read that. It's some, um, it was something, it was, it was like a, in an alternate universe right. Batman. So it wasn't like the canonical Batman, but yeah, it was a modern guy and he was inspired by the story of Mises or whatever and decided to place Batman in historical or anti historical, <laughs> sideways historical universe. And where Batman's talking to Robin about the importance of, or maybe it wasn't to Robin. He's talking to somebody though about the importance of Mises and his fight against the Nazis and stuff. And I was like, "Wow, that's that's pretty awesome." Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good yeah. uh, blockbuster hit to kind of yeah. watch. Um, and then I guess, uh, what does free market anarchy mean to you? Uh, well, I 
I prefer to, to look at it. Um, so if somebody asks me, oh, are you an anarchist? And they're we're like a libertarian convention or something. I will say yes, because I know what the person means. He right. means, or do you support a, a minimal night watchman state? Right. Um, but even there, it's that word anarchy. I mean, we know what it means politically, but it's more that I'm, I would describe it and say, it's not so much that I'm against the state. It's that I'm for applying the rules of morality and the law to everybody. And when you do that, the state apparatus can't survive, right. you know, because it is based on the institutional violation of people's property rights. Like you have to contribute to us, whether you like our product or not, or we'll throw you in a cage. Right. And so how, you know, so it's, that's the reason the state shouldn't exist in my mind is because it's based on violating people's property rights. All right. And I guess the last question being here in Rothbard's library, are you an enemy of the state? Well, <laughs> it's such aggressive language. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm an enemy of the state for sure. Right. Because then I'm, I'm not saying the state's my enemy, even though that's a, a separate question. But yeah, for sure, the state doesn't like people like us thinking like us. And that's really the thing. It's that we're thinking this way. Right. You know what I mean? It's not so much what we can do physically. And, you know, I think violence is futile ultimately. Right. It's more they don't like people who are just like, you know, I don't buy into this bogus system. You guys are a bunch of liars. They, you can't talk like that. They need to shut that down. Right. That's uh, where a lot of this stuff comes from, from the academia. So it's great that there is your good, legit institution here to kind of push forth real truth and real sound economics. Uh, and for me, that's this is this is awesome. It's great uh, what you guys have put together here. It's great faculty and uh, great lectures I've had this past week. And thank you so much for coming here and, and doing all this for thank us. Thank you, and I appreciate you documenting this stuff, and it helps to get the word out. And I really appreciate the work you're doing. Right, thank you, sir. <laughs>